When I was a kid, I thought that prehistoric elephants like the mammoth and dinotherium eventually became the modern-day elephant, in other words, anagenesis. I later learned that this wasn't the case, and in fact, some of those cool-looking elephants weren't elephants at all. Instead, they fall into a broader group called the proboscideans, which include the true elephants as well as many evolutionary side branches. I have relatively few prehistoric mammals, and of those, I have even fewer proboscideans. In fact, for the really popular mammoth, I've ever only had this one, this awesome old Carnegie Collection mammoth. I'm more taken with the bizarre four tuskers, such as this Collecte Gomphotherium, this Amy Belladon, And of course, the recent Eofauna Koto Belladon. Now, I do try to be stricter with the scales and quality for my prehistoric mammals, since I have less space for them, but my preferred scale is 1 to 20. But I like these four tuskers so much, I'm willing to break my rule just to get them. Now, I've shown you before the Din One Studio Miritherium, and I promised then that I'll show you something more badass. So today, we'll look at a four tusker, from Din One Studio, the relatively well-known Platybelodon. Platybelodon is one of group colloquially called the Shovel Tuskers, due to the obvious resemblance to that implement in these lower, flat tusks, and these in turn used to be collectively nested under the Gomphotheres. Now today, there's been some further separation into the Gomphotheridae, to which Gomphotherium still belongs, and the Amy Belodontidae, which includes Amy Belladon, Kono Belladon, and Platy Belladon here. Platy Belladon, like other shovel tuskers, are often depicted with these flattish trunks, as you see in this image of Platy Belladon, Amy Belladon, and this Safari Limited Amy Belladon. The origin of this is probably Alexei Borisiak's 1929 suggestion that Platy Belladon lacked a trunk with a hippo-like snout, though much more elongate. The exact reasoning I have been unable to discover in the literature. William Sanders argued that this didn't make sense, simply because if you have long pairs of upper and lower tusks, it's hard to then have lips or a long tongue to get the food in the mouth. So a separate trunk made more sense. And since then, I've seen more depictions with this interpretation, including this Din One Studio Patty Belladon. I would still say that flattened trunk looks cooler. Platy Belladon is estimated to be between 3 meters or 10 feet long and 1.9 meters or 6.2 feet at the shoulder. Now this model measures 19 centimeters or 7.5 inches long and 12.5 centimeters or 4.9 inches tall at the shoulder. So it's actually closer to 1 to 16 and not the advertised 1 to 20, which is a little disappointing. Still, if you recall, I estimated the Din One Miritherium to be 1 to 17 scale, so they do scale near to each other. Now let's look at the model. And before I handle it, let me warn you that this is made of resin, and it is very fragile. You may well expect weak points to be here in the tail, the tusks, the trunk, and even the flat shovel. Now what I strongly suggest you do, if you can still grab a hold of one of these, is to request that the tusks and the tail, and indeed any part that comes separate, be packed separately. And also emphasize to the seller that you must protect it well, as you are ordering from overseas. Then when it arrives, you put it all together again. So starting at the head, you see the reason why these Din One Studio models are a pleasure to behold. From the tip of the trunk, uh, you can see how wet and real this looks, accented with just a little bit of pink. And notice also the wrinkling detail throughout the trunk, which you'll see continue in the rest of the animal. 
As a hand-sculpted model, there's a kind of roughness of texture that I like about this, representing a craft that's all but lost today. The tusks, obviously a highlight, are painted with a very organic feel. You can visualize the worn enamel here. And here on the shovels, you can see hints of wear and use. The scoops of Platybelodon are as wide as the back of the jaw, but it's narrow in the middle, and that's what you see in this model. The lower mandible here is especially fragile, so be very careful handling this. Now interestingly, Lambert studied the tooth wear patterns and did not find them consistent with shoveling in the mud for plants. Instead, he proposed that the lower jaw was used as a scythe, with the trunk picking up vegetation and then running it through the edge. Now he based this on a couple of points. First, the mandibular tusks are more flattened than in Amy Belladon. Now second, the distal tips are inwardly abraded, creating this kind of crescent shape on each tusk. And third, the ventral surfaces near the tip are worn flat at an angle, creating a very sharp edge. On the other hand, Amy Belladon jaws were relatively thin with scoop-shaped incisors, suggesting it did use it as the often assumed scoop. However, he also thought that Amy Belladon would have used its scoop for scraping off bark as well. So, while both look like shovel tuskers, they use these shovel tusks very differently. Now moving down, I just really need for you to see that detail you'll also see a coloration that, while monotonous, has many subtle washes and layers. And just look at how craggy the skin is. And you imagine a wise old elephant that has seen much of life, moving ponderously with slow dignity, minding its own business. The underside have a pink to them that looks rather alarming, but it's quite a common scheme you see in Promocidian art. Down the legs here. Then the back legs. And finally, to this tail. Again, very, very fragile, so please be careful. So let's bring out the 1 to 17 scale Din 1 Studio Meritarium. And also the other shovel tuskers I have. The Safari Limited Amy Belladon. And then the Eofauna Kono Belladon.
So that's really it for the Din One Studio Platy Belladon. I'm pretty happy with it, although I wouldn't have minded if it had that flattish trunk of all, just for variety. Of course, for more current thought, this separate trunk is more sensible. Now these models really are pretty special. It's really quite rare now to see handcrafted models like this, and of course Din One Studio has some of the best here for mammals. I do wish they were more accurate in keeping to their stated 1 to 20 scale, especially as Collecte has been disappointing in their consistency here, but this is something I'll have to accept as the norm. I do have one last Probacidian to show you, and that one is my favourite of the three. So look out for that. I'll see you soon with another video.